Okay, this is just a little side video that uh, I'm doing for Granddad, uh, also for OU Brads, who um, replicated one of my homemade batteries back in, uh, I guess it was 2013. Uh, I started building rechargeable batteries and homemade batteries back in those years, and Granddad's working on these uh, homemade batteries too, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, do one for Granddad to... Um, Show them this stainless steel uh, Epsom salts and water battery that OU Brads did using a, a pill bottle. And he just uh, cut up uh, some of these uh, pads here and then uh, put them in uh, a pill bottle, uh, separated, and then uh, the Epsom salts and water and uh, charged it up different ways. But uh, I wanted to try this solar waiver and it works really good you know this is what uh, granddad was showing in his video i'll give a link to both granddad's video and ou brad's video of 2013. ou brad's is probably the the most interesting because he did some really good uh, work with this back in those years but uh, this is the voltage on the um, the cell and this is a solar garden light uh, solar panel it's a uh, just stainless steel with a separator and then um, a piece of plastic to isolate the, one of the um, leads and then um, Epsom salts and water and you charge and discharge and charge and discharge and you form up a rechargeable cell. Now let me show you um, what happens when I shade this thing and how the voltage starts going down on the cell. The little guy will run till about 0.7 volts, then he stops. The little uh, LED oscillator goes down to about half a volt. Now I'll uncover this again, and see the voltage start to climb back up. And uh, this is just in my kitchen, uh, ambient sunlight in my kitchen. And the uh, experiment that's been running for many, many years uh, uses one of these, uh, what I call a penny oscillator, which is a LED set up as a blinking circuit that you vary the blink rate with a potentiometer so that the blink rate just gets high enough so you don't see it with your visual eye, which means the pulse is going out there uh, just, just above the rate where your eyeball can see it. So you have a light that runs all the time, day and night, um, and uh, it forms a night light using one of these cells. But I made a much, much bigger one with a much, much bigger panel than OU Brad's did. And uh, that's really all you need, I think. I think that size right there, put in a sunny window with either your solar waiver type of thing or one of these uh, LED blinker circuits. And you could have something that ran all the time, uh, day and night, or at least through most of the night, and using just that size of a cell. And here again, that's just this stainless steel. It's a magnetic stainless steel. It's not the high uh, chromium, uh, high nickel. Uh, it's cheap. It comes from China, I'm sure. Uh, your Epsom salts and then uh, your water. And then I've been charging them up with this uh, 4.7 volt uh, lithium, but uh, you can use just a little uh, solar cell with ambient uh, sunlight in your house if you've got it or fluorescent lights and it will charge up that um, that cell let me show you again how when you take the light off of it down she goes then you uh, give feed it some more juice which is solar energy and up she goes again. Now this is charging while the device is running. And this is what I've been working on for years and years and years, is devices that use less than the uh, ambient energy going into your storage unit. This could be a supercapacitor or a rechargeable battery, whatever you want to use to store the energy. But the device running is using less than what the solar energy acceptor is taking in and here again I wanted it to do with ambient conditions not out in the direct sunlight but just ambient conditions to get something that would charge up during the day and then it run at least part of the night on whatever it gathered during your daylight hours and then run and this little uh, penny oscillator what I called it uh, runs all the time all the way through the night and I use it in my other house as a night light and of course it never needs a battery it's got this rechargeable now 
a couple of times in the course of the many, many years I've been running this, this little lead has corroded off. And what OU Brad's did to compensate for that is he put a stainless steel screw down on each side of the um, electrodes to get around that problem, and I'm sure his are still running. Um, once in a while I change the electrolyte, but you don't really have to. It turns a yellowish, reddish brown, which is the uh, iron and the chromium and nickel going into solution, which probably is toxic. So you'd have to be careful when you disposed of this that you didn't uh, pollute the environment with it. But uh, that is a homemade rechargeable cell. You can see the charges going on up on this thing. That anyway, I just wanted to give this to Granddad and OU Brad's if he's still around. That uh, that was one of my most successful uh, uh, homemade battery experiments. Thanks for watching.